السلام عليكم I always like to start speaking by giving recognitions to the native indigenous people on whose land we stand today, in particular the Ohlone people. And unfortunately, our campus still holds bones of Native Americans as a collection in 2023. Second, I always give recognition and respect to our black brothers and sisters who were brought to this land as cargo in the holds of ships. Yet they continue to inspire, continue to be creative force, continue to be the moral arc of this country and this society. It is on their shoulders that we stand today. Just like Malcolm X spoke in Dunal Hall, Muhammad Ali spoke at Cedar Gate, and MLK spoke on these steps, and the Black Panther Party was in this neighborhood. You need to know history. Not his story, but your story. There is a different history always that is there. There is the story and the history of empire and power. And there is the history of the people. Howard Zinn, we need to read the history of the people. Empire always have overwhelming force, but the people always undermine the power of the force because the power of the people always will take the force of the empire. Now, I don't know, I asked in my class, have you all watched Star Wars? Have you watched Star Wars? Do you identify with Darth Vader? No. Whom do you identify with? No. Luke Skywalker, did he have the empire behind him? No. What did he have? No. Resistance and the force. No. May the force be with you. No. May the force be with you. Let's get back to it. We have to correct some things. Students for Justice in Palestine was founded at UC Berkeley in 1992. Let me hear again because again if you go to the, uh, they call it the internet or the wide world web, right? Not everything on the web is accurate, right? Was founded here in 1992 by graduate students mostly. And the first, again, collective graduate students organized at the conclusion of the anti-apartheid movement. So it's very important because we think historical change is at the moment rather than being cumulative. The end of the apartheid movement, also the Central American Solidarity Movement, the Environmental Movement, and the U.S. invasion, illegal invasion of Iraq, brought the students together to make a link between what is taking place inside and what is taking place abroad, and that's how Students for Justice in Palestine was born. It says 
that anyone who wants to organize for Palestine is welcome as long as you have the principle of centering Palestinian concerns and Palestine as the center. Now I want to tell people who are Johnny come lately in some corners, they think that there is a central command, right? Because they call me the most dangerous professor in America. Right? And I'm dangerous because I eat a lot of shawarma maybe. And they confuse falafel with weapons of mass destruction. Again, we'll give them, you know, some excuse because it's a little bit difficult to pronounce falafel and then uh, Show, show, uh, you know, take Arabic 101, it helps you. <laughs> but in general, they think there is a central command for students for justice in Palestine. So much so that this little person called Stephen Emerson, who runs the investigative project on terrorism, is actually direct contact with Prime Minister Netanyahu, who writes him an email to investigate to investigate whether students for justice in Palestine are connected to, hum no, to Hamas, Hummus, right? <laughs> okay. Literally, the email, we have the email from the Prime Minister office in Israel talking and asking Stephen Emerson to investigate. Now, for those who are taping outside, please get my right side, right? <laughs> because, you know, I'm always being under document and there have action alert, right? He got angry, right? Again, we just have to excuse him. They have, they have a lot of money they need to spend, right? <laughs> so, we insisted when we created Students for Justice in Palestine not to be centralized. Why? Because we understood all the propensity for constantly trying to enter into student and political organizing for Palestine to try to derail it. And lo and behold, now we have 200 plus SJPs across the country. We have some in Canada, we have some in Europe. They don't understand that you could have a moral, ethical position and you organize on the basis of it, you don't need a centralized command. Right? So that's just for correcting history on that. Now I wanted to say the following as well. Berkeley was instrumental in ending apartheid. Berkeley was instrumental. You students, Graduate and undergraduate, faculty and staff, not the administration. Not the board of regents. Students got arrested. They built a shanty town in here. They organized until they passed the resolutions for divestment in order to actually end apartheid. When Nelson Mandela was released from jail and he came and spoke at the Oakland Coliseum, he thanked UC Berkeley students and the anti-apartheid movement. The administrators and the Board of Regents wanted to take the photo op with Nelson Mandela. Again, it's a souvenir for them, not an ethical, moral arc of history. Students wrote and changed the moral arc of history by ending apartheid. And today I say unequivocally, students at Berkeley, students across the country, students in other countries will bring apartheid, settler colonialism in Palestine to an end. The changes that we are witnessing are irreversible. The changes we are seeing are irreversible. Now we need to understand, I know some people say, it's complicated. 
Nuclear physics is complicated. Doing Arabic grammar is complicated for those who study Arabic, right? right? There is nothing complicated about colonialism. Of the two varieties, whether motherland colonialism and satellite like Great Britain, which we say Alhamdulillah is no longer great. <laughs> we have to emphasize. It had motherland and colonies. And then you have the French and so on, that's motherland colonies. And then settler colonialism. You don't need to go farther to understand it. We have in the United States of America, the most successful settler colonial program in the world. No. Settler colonialism does two things, genocide and transfer. In America, two things were done. Genocide to the native population and transfer to the reservations. It is not complicated. Palestine was the last settler colonial project to be commissioned by the Western world. That's what it is. The last settler colonial project to be commissioned by the Western world. I said the following. I know Biden, some people love Biden. I said there is a straight line from Belfort to Biden. For those who don't know, Belfort, who's a deeply anti-Semitic, wrote and authored the Belfort Declaration, even though there were six drafts, that completely was the first legal document to dispossess the Palestinians. And that began the process in 1917. So we need to also correct history. Palestinians were first colonized by the British, and then the lease was transferred to the World Zionist Organization and the creation of Israel in 1948. Biden today is an extension and continuity of the Belfort Declaration. So there is a straight line from Belfort to Biden. And it's interesting these days to see all the important people that are making their way to express solidarity with a genocide. The US government, the British, the croissant Macron, Canada, which is actually part of the Commonwealth, they have the king over them, they still have not gotten complete freedom. We'll excuse them, right? Italy, right? What they have all in common is a colonial legacy. And we need to remind them of it. More importantly, more importantly, they speak that they represent the world community, excuse me, excuse moi. The world community does not live in 120th of the world population. The world community is dark complexion. The world community is Asian. The world community is African. The world community is in India. The world community is all over the world. So we tell them, when you meet, you represent the minority that have to powder its face just to actually appear in front of the mirror. So you need to put this clarity in our understanding. I wanna try to conclude because again, there's a lot of things. Uh, first, again, we need to be reading Fanon. If you don't read Fanon, then you don't understand what's taking place. Wretched of the Earth must be a must read for you. You must read Fanon, Wretched of the Earth. You should read Dying Colonialism. You should read Fanon. You should read Edward Said. You should read Edward Said. If you did not read Edward Said, you should. It must be a reading, right? So yeah, these are important materials that we have to actually engage with to understand. I want to conclude with understanding where we are. We are facing genocide. 
we are facing genocide. Now I wanted to actually look at article uh, three of the Convention of Genocide. Again, this is not uh, something we developed, the so-called Northern Hemisphere, quote, civilized world, right? Don't hold your breath on that, like it's Comedy Central in there. Right? <laughs> A civilized world bombed Iraq one and a half million. The civilized world decimated Vietnam. The civilized world, Cambodia and Laos. The civilized world in Afghanistan. The civilized world in Latin America, low intensity warfare. The civilized world, right? Whenever they say civilized world, I run the other way, right? When they say we wanna bring development, I say head, head to the hills. Take your cow and get to the hills. At least your cow will give you milk. They're not gonna kill it. They're just gonna take you out completely. So again, the Duke University, Watson Institute said since 9-11, 4.7 million people in the global south perished in the civilized world war in the global south. Because you die, nameless, faceless, mere numbers. That's what Fanon said in relations to the colonized people and their predicament. So we need to understand he was speaking of us. He was speaking of the darker complexion, beautiful people that are full of love, energy, creativity, and challenge. So Article 3 says the following. The following acts shall be punishable. Genocide. Israel is committing genocide. We will take you to the International Criminal Court and you will face the charge of genocide. Conspiracy to commit genocide. You don't even have to do it. Conspiring to commit genocide is punishable. Direct and public incitement to commit genocide. I don't know about you, what do you think of all the news and what is it doing? It's inciting to genocide. It's inciting. Fox News, we charge you with inciting to genocide. CNN, we, we charge you with inciting to genocide. CBS, we, we actually charge you with inciting to genocide. Secretary Blinken, you are inciting to genocide. Biden, Biden, when he stood in the White House, using the pulpit of the White House, and lying out of his teeth that he saw pictures of decapitated babies, he was inciting to genocide. We need to understand attempt to commit genocide, complicity in genocide. If you're an intellectual and you're not speaking of genocide, you're complicit. And I say this, I say this, I know people, we need to know history. Everybody uh, on what is it, January 19th, if I'm mistaken of the date, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Day, everybody dust up, I have a dream speech, right? So I wrote an article, it's time to dust your I have a dream speech and wake up and read and listen to MLK's speech in 1967 and 68. In 67 he says, silence and complicity when he broke away from the Democratic Party with the Congress and began to say and speak against the Vietnam War. His following speech, the three evils of society materialism, militarism, and racism. That speech should be learned. It is one of the most radical speeches critiquing the United States. So for those people who on January 19th stand up and say even, you know, sometimes the Klan will stand up and wants to celebrate Martin Luther King, I have a dream because they keep you dreaming, right? I want everybody to wake up and read the 67 and 68 Martin Luther King to understand what was taking place for us to understand the moment, right? So as we look at intellectuals that are not actually speaking and challenging genocide, we need to challenge them to speak on the genocide and the war that has taken place. If you're not opposing, if you're not opposing militarism, the U.S. sending and giving an open check for bombs to be blown up on Palestinian children's skulls and bodies of Palestinian men and women. 70% of all who died are children and women. If you're not speaking on, on this genocide, then you have failed the moral test. Silence is complicity. You need to speak out. And, and 
for the media, for the media, if you are not reporting accurately, and if you're not translating Arabic accurately, we could provide you translation, right? We have translation. CNN have committed malpractice. As the Israeli grandmother that was released spoke about how the captures actually treated her well. CNN said that she said they treated her like hell. Again, later on they say, oh, it's a mistranslation. That's not the first time. In another time, people, when they were going on to a funeral procession, they were saying and singing for the martyr. The translator on the radio and TV said they're saying death to America. Complete malpractice in translation. So if you're a media person, and the only way for you to report is by engaging in putting fair and lovely as a way to whiten your face and whiten your report, we need to actually transform your report and you to say the truth. You are a person that is a witness to the truth. Be a journalist, right? Anderson Cooper, you are not professional if you're reporting from one side of the, of the fence or one side of the border and not you're going where the action is. And you can't act that you're under threat with all your CNN team and you think that you're a professional and you just dust the dust over your dress because it has to be shiny, right? So we need to take and challenge everyone. Lastly, lastly, and I promise again, we have a resolution that passed in the city of Richmond. We need to support them, but if you live in any other city and you have a relationship to any city council in the region in here, make sure to take the resolution from Richmond and get it to be introduced across the Bay Area. We have to make the change from the bottom up. We have to change from the bottom up. Change from the bottom up. We are all Palestinians. 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 Freedom, freedom, freedom. Palestine will be free. Assalamu alaikum.